Uh, Kent Wilson is becoming one of my favorite guys. Um, he runs a holding company called Alpine Four Holdings. A, um, a holding company is, Mike, actually tell us, Mike, give, give us the... Uh... Well, it's a, you know, they acquire businesses uh, wholly that fit under one of their several portfolios, like, uh, I don't know, aerospace, de uh, defense services, technology, manufacturing, Are you reading that construction from services. <laughs> right from the website? Let's oh, say hello close. to Mr. Kent Wilson. <laughs> Kent Wilson, we had to see a pal. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, hey, hello, Brady. How are you? So, look, um, this is a great. We, Mike Kent and I were talking earlier today. This is a great. This is a great um, uh, learning uh, um, moment because holding companies are just. Do you know who's a holding company? Oracle, Apple, Google. Mm -hmm. Because what they do is they seek um, companies with low debt, cash flow, and assets. And what does that do? As they as they vend them in using stock for currency, um, it pads their balance sheet. Suddenly, they've got more money coming in. Without, which is which is already a growing concern, which is paying for itself, mm -hmm. and suddenly they look bigger. Um, the one thing that's interesting here is that you don't have to. Uh, if you're a coaling company, I could buy a French fry company here, and Russ's tequila factory over there, uh, Mike's bad decision company, yep. and uh, and and, my, and uh, uh, Greg's a genius company. It doesn't have to be the same category. Right. And sort of what happens is, you 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 get like a new CEO will come in. And they'll talk to the most the, the the most important customers, come in and cut the fat, and then execute the business plan. Mm -hmm. Well, not all of them are going to make it. But guess what? Most of them do. And, and it's sort of interesting, if you think about holding companies as a whole, you'll see that most holding companies sort of burn a couple of steaks in the barbecue before they open up the restaurant. And, and I can tell you, Kent Wilson hit a home run with this drone company. He, oh, yeah. Have you heard of the drone company? So, Kent, do you know when you go in, uh, like, hey, this bar looks good, I'll acquire that. Uh, when you go in and do an acquisition, do you have an idea? Did you know that the drone, the drone deal was going to be so big? Because that is a huge, huge acquisition. We, we had an idea because our subsidiary quality circuit assembly was manufacturing the circuit boards that made uh, the drone fly. And so we had pretty intimate knowledge with the background IP, uh, the group that currently owned it at the time, which was Bessemer Capital. Um, so we were very strategic in our offer. And we had a, a sneaking idea that it would be very receptive uh, positively to the market. Um, so yes, on that one, yes. But but, but the, the idea here is, is that is that suddenly it puts you guys on the map as a company, as a discussion for people talking about the company. Uh, speaking of that of that part of your holding company and, and that part of your business, what's next for for the drone side of the things? We're talking about military. We're talking about municipalities. I'm assuming. Yeah, I mean, so our our again, we talked about before our, our rotocopter it really replaces a helicopter for surveillance. It can stay aloft for two, sometimes three hours, uh, you know, with minor uh, baggage to it. When I say cameras and stuff like that, attachments, um, depending on, you know, the flight mission and that kind of stuff, the flight time varies. But um, really, honestly, we are moving towards solving the um, logistics autonomous issue that I think is the greatest opportunity um, in my lifetime to allow it to solve. You're talking about everybody needs it. Um, you can solve problems where it's congested traffic and it takes a long time or distance that might be inhibitive to get a delivery of a package there. We know that our airframes, both the G1 and the US uh, series of airframes, uh, solve those mission sets pretty can, can, economically. Can, is that the global autonomous corporate? Is that the global autonomous? Is that, is that what that vertical is? Yeah, that's a, global autonomous is an offshoot of Alpine for uh, utilizing uh, technologies from two of our companies, Bayou Aerospace on the drone side and an Electjet using solid state batteries to give greater performance to the Bayou drones that allow them to do more drops and lift more weight. Can and that is currently going into Dubai. In fact, I'm leaving tomorrow for the Jitex event 
hopefully, um, it, you know, we'll be uh, there on site without any interruptions. Uh, and uh, it will be quite uh, a big deal for Global Autonomous to be present in Dubai for Jitex. Kent, is, is Dubai using the drones now for, for everything? We've talked about, you know, groceries and Amazon packages and pizzas and things like that. Is Dubai using drones for everything now? You know, Dubai has set out some pretty, you know, Sheikh Mohammed has put, uh, set out some pretty unique parameters for growth and autonomous. <laughs> Uh, the Dubai Future Foundation has its own lab developing, you know, autonomous vehicles and those type of things. Uh, but yes, they're currently using small set subsets of doing that with the mission by 2030 to be a city that is robustly using autonomous delivery in all facets, whether it be cars, uh, buses, uh, in our case, you know, flying you right. know, over the city to deliver packages. So. Yeah, there, that's a great place to be if you're interested in doing what we want to do with Global Autonomous. I find it interesting that when Kent goes to Dubai, he goes to Dubai. When Mike flees to Dubai, it's a whole different story. <laughs> um, uh, I, listen, I want to spend some time. I, I, I'm going to throw a curveball here. I did some research, and I didn't realize that you and your wife had, uh, let me say this correctly. You guys have a foundation. You, he, he's a char you're a charitable guy. What, what's, what's going on there? You don't, you don't publicize this. Well, as a Christian man, you're not supposed to really talk about what your right hand is doing with your left hand as far as giving goes. But yes, we do have a charity called the Aleo Foundation. Um, you know, we, we're on the board. We don't draw any types of salaries or anything like that. Um, but we are, our mission is very passionate. We have threefold. We want to do medical care for those who really need it, usually children. So we're a sponsor and a donor of our time with Phoenix Children's Hospital. We also support missionaries around the world. We like people that are on the front lines, and we found a group of missionaries that do that well. They're, and they've been in Syria and Libya dealing with refugee camps from war tour areas, and they see the worst of humanity, but also get to be the best of humanity and help these you know, widows and children and families that are displaced. Okay, if, if you're going to make a list um, of, then, of dangerous places in the world, wouldn't serve, yeah, it, it, your honest problem. to God. So, so, where, so where are they headed next? I'm not allowed to disclose that, um, but I can tell you with Hamas and everything that they're, they 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 also have to worry about their lives, you know. Sure. And so as they do these things, uh, and so we're not really allowed to talk about what they do, but we're allowed to support them and help them financially to help people that are most in need. And so that's valuable. Well, to good for you, man. I, I I love how you guys are marching down the field in the business. Would you would you ever uh, fold in the philanthropy with the business? Would there be any uh, upside to that? You know, we try to do personally what we can do. As a Christian man, we try to tithe, um, but uh, I don't. I think I try to keep those bifurcated uh, away from each other, mainly because um, it's just you know I have to be focused as CEO. And um, but until I retire, maybe I'll go more into the philanthropy side of things. Good stuff, Kent. Great to have you on. Kent Wilson is his name. Alpine Four Holdings, ALPP. Have a great trip. Have a great trip to, uh, to Dubai. You see Mike yeah, the one without hey, a passport. By the way, Mike has his own uh, charity it's called Doctors Without Licenses. <laughs> we do a lot of plastic surgery. Pete <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bishop, coming up.